Hi everyone, Mosmo here from the Blue Root team. And today I'm going to go through something on, on a slightly more advanced spectrum, but I hear a lot of people asking for it. And it's basically how to integrate Zoho CRM with tools like Zapier. And I have some best practices, especially in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to do that through webhooks. That's a very stable way to do it. I'll talk about it in the video. So essentially how to integrate Zoho CRM with Zapier to then, for example, move data into MailChimp or move data into another software, right? So Zapier is a really key tool in a lot of people's businesses. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go over how to set it up, how to map all the fields, how to test it, and then some watch out. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. We love hearing from you. And uh, feel free to leave some uh, comments below on what you thought of this video. This is a more advanced one, so I'm curious what people think. Enjoy the video. All right, so let's get into this. So I'm in a dummy or a demo CRM here. You can see along the top here, I have the CRM and Zapier opened up. For those of you that don't know, and I'm assuming most do if you're watching this video, Zapier is like a, a low code integration tool. So it allows you very easily to send data from system A to system B without having to know code. Zoho integrates with Zapier along with thousands of other applications. So almost for sure the app you're trying to integrate with is on Zapier. The predominant ones I see are ones like email marketing apps, accounting apps, maybe some reporting apps, Excel in the cloud, Google Sheet, things like that. Let's go through this flow here. What I'm gonna do in this scenario is I'm gonna wanna send data out of the CRM let's say when a deal is closed, right? Now your scenario can be anything, when a contact's created, when a lead's created, et cetera. The reason why I'm doing deal is closed is because it shows the most complex way of doing this and then everything else is easy if you understand this. So if I hit the settings here, I'm gonna go to workflow rules. So you, you have to tell Zoho when to send this data out, right? The way I'm showing you is through webhooks. And so basically what that means is we're gonna write a workflow saying when the stage of the deal is closed, send a webhook. What a webhook is, is it's basically, think of it like a long URL. And in that URL, it automatically throws stuff into the URL. So like this, you can see this is part of a webhook in, in theory. This is as well, this is as well. And so what we're doing is we're sending a long URL to Zapier when we want to send that URL, for example, when the deal's closed, then Zapier reads that URL, grabs all this stuff, it says, oh, okay, it's org this, oh, okay, it's CRM, oh, okay, and then it can send it to another software. So the reason you wanna do a webhook is Zapier has all kinds of great ways to pull data from Zoho CRM. For example, when a lead is created, it can pull data. When a record's edited, it can pull data. But you might have very specific circumstances when you want it to pull data. And sometimes Zapier will just keep trying to pull data all the time because you might say, well, when a deal's edited, so it's gonna pull at stage one, pull at stage two, pull at stage three. You don't want that, right? So if you wanna really control when data is sent to Zapier, this is the best way to do it. And that's why I said it's a little more advanced. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create rule. I'm gonna do it in the deals. I'm gonna say deal closed automation to Zapier. So now what you're gonna do I mean, in this example, I'm gonna say on edit, when a specific field gets modified, and I'm gonna say the stage is modified to the value closed one, All right? So this is just a normal workflow here. Uh, you can watch my workflow video. I've got like a 40 minute one on how to do these things. And now you're gonna to get to here. So now what you've told the system to do is, when the stage is closed one, run the rule. And you can see here, there's a webhook tab. And so when you click this, you can now name your webhook. And then it says URL to notify. When you send this data, this wants to know where am I sending it? So you have to go into Zapier now. So here's Zapier, I'm gonna create a new Zap and I'm going to say webhook, right? Choose event. So you wanna choose the webhook tab and then in here, what you wanna choose is catch hook, right? And so basically what's gonna happen now, you can skip this step just hit continue and then Zapier will give you this URL so you're gonna take this URL you're gonna come back here and you're gonna put it in here right 
So now you're going to go to the next step. So header, you don't really need. In a typical Zapier scenario, you won't need it. Maybe I'll make another video more advanced where we can talk about that. But what you're going to do is you're going to go to the body. So this is basically building out the URL I talked about. So you're going to hit module parameters. And now it's going to ask you, what do you want to send? So I'm going to send the deal name. And then you have to name it something. Deal. I recommend using camel case like this. So that's basically like no spaces, but each new word has a capital. Okay. Then you hit new and then we'll go actually, and we're also going to send the closing date. And we're also going to send, I'm just going to send a few more fields here. I'm going to send the owner. Now, cool thing here, when I add a new one, I can actually choose other modules, which is a massively powerful feature of this webhook too. So any related module to the deal, you can pull data up from, which the normal Zapier, if you don't use the webhook, won't be able to do. So you could also pull the contact name. So maybe I'll just do that here. I usually have full name. No, okay, so I'll just bring the contact first name, All right? So you can go through this and add a bunch of fields. And so basically what you're doing is in the URL that I was talking about, see in this URL where it says org, and then it says the number, what's gonna happen is you're building out a URL where it's gonna say deal name, and then it's gonna have the number. So the URL is gonna look like a deal name equals, and then put the number, closing date equals. And so then Zapier knows how to read that. It's a very common way of doing things in web development. You could preview the URL if you want, but once you hit save here, now you're basically done. So. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save this. And now you should test it, right? So I'm gonna create a deal. I'm gonna put a closing date. I'm gonna put the contact name. That's probably good. So I'll hit save. So now in order to test, when you, you have to go back to Zapier and you have to hit test. And so now it starts listening for something to hit that webhook. So what you can do here is you can actually so I triggered this off of closed one, right? So I hit closed one, put the amount, save. There we go. I always check the timeline. Okay, the workflow ran, great. Now test. Now it should find this now. There we go, it found it. And so you can see here, here's all the data we sent, right? So the deal name, the first name, the closing date, and the deal owner. That was all the stuff we listed out. So Zapier caught it. And so now you hit continue, and now you actually do the integration with something. Right. So let's say you wanted to send it into an accounting software or MailChimp or something like that. I'm just going to do Zoho because we have like a lot of Zoho accounts and we're just going to say create module entry. Right. And choose the account. Continue. And then you have to go through and, and do some setup here. So every app that you do in Zapier will make you go through some setup like this, right? So it's gonna say, where do you wanna put the data? So I'll say, okay, I wanna put it in the mortgages, okay? What layout? This is a Zoho specific example. And then trigger, yeah, I wanna trigger workflows. So again, this is all Zoho specific, but we're gonna go through this and then I'll show you the mapping exercise here. So here it is. So what do you wanna put in the name? Well, you can grab the deal name from your webhook. Great. What do you want to put in the amount? If we had the amount, you'd grab it from the webhook, right? So you go through all of this and take all the things you got from your hook, put it into your new app. So this is basically how you do it. How you test it from here, once this is all set up, close another deal, it'll run. You can go look in the external software if it actually went in. Like I said, this is a very detailed way of doing things. The benefits are kind of, there's a few of them. Number one, you can control exactly when the hook sends, which with normal Zapier, sometimes that's tricky. Two, you can grab more than just the main module. So in the normal Zapier to Zoho integration, if you're pulling from the deal, you can only pull stuff in the deal. You can't pull from the user table or from any related list attached to the deal. Whereas with a webhook, you can. And then three, it's very easy to add new fields into it. So let's say you wanted to do that. You would just go back into your webhook, add new fields, do a new test, and then map the new fields, right? So it's very easy to um, customize. So as always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I want to hear what people think of this video. Uh, it's more of an advanced one. But I think it's pretty popular and we do this a lot at Blue Root for clients and uh, it's a really great way to create integrations. Have a good one.